Bonjour et bienvenue au French Tech Podcast. Welcome to the French Tech Podcast. I'm here with Floyd from Block Armor. Hello. At the Big Data World Conference. Um, hi, Floyd. Could I ask you to please quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Floyd DeCosta, and uh, I'm the co founder of a company called Block Armor. Uh, we use emerging technology to secure all sorts of uh, enterprise, uh, enterprises and devices, uh, especially in the Internet of Things. Uh, my background personally is uh, uh, I'm a management consulting, pretty much one of the most boring jobs you could have. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but spent 11 and a half years with uh, Capgemini, which is really my French connection, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's more to come. Uh, but then, uh, after that, uh, decided to you know you know get out of the you know the, the enterprise uh, traditional enterprise world and start off on my own. And that's when I met my co-founder Narayan, who's the former CISO of uh, was the former CISO of India's National Stock Exchange, and we uh, and 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 uh, we set up Block Armor. Uh, Block Armor was accelerated by Airbus. Oh. Yeah, it's BizLab program, so there's even more French. Like Another I said. French connection. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And was recently voted one of the top 25 cybersecurity startups worldwide by Accenture. Wow, that's terrific. So yeah. when you talk about cybersecurity, there, there there's many different application domains, right? Is there any particular thing that you focus on? Yeah, uh, but. You know, when you look at cyber, let's take a step back there. Today, if you look at cybersecurity, all the solutions out there, right? It's the same old technology that people are using, the same VPNs, the same, you, you, you know, uh, the same stacks, and just layering, 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 patching that, right? Every time there's a break, every time the, uh, an application is compromised, you patch it, you layer it, and that's where you have this thick setup there. What we're looking at is saying, how can we look at it differently? How can we take a whole new approach to cybersecurity, right? And that's when we look at emerging technology, emerging models and architecture, uh, like the software-defined pyramid architecture, like blockchain technology, to redefine uh, or relook uh, cybersecurity and address, or basically uh, look at addressing some of these uh, challenges in, in bold new ways. So emerging technology almost has a competitive advantage Absolutely. in the cybersecurity race. Absolutely, because Today, when you're looking at uh, compromise, when you're looking at cyber attacks, the people attacking you are not using yesterday's technology, and yet you're trying to defend using the same old technology that, that's been around for years, right? And so our whole idea is how do you get one step ahead of the curve? How do you get you know, uh, one step ahead of the game where you know, you're not waiting to get compromised, and then you're compromised, and then trying to figure out how to solve that? No, you see, you get ahead. And how can you protect your infrastructure? You know, using emerging technology to basically counter these um, new, all new cyber threats that you have today. So you mentioned emerging technology. Your company is based block armor. So I'm assuming there's blockchain. There is blockchain somewhere in what you do. <laughs> Why blockchain for cybersecurity? Fantastic. So let's be very clear. We use private permission blockchain technology. So what is that? So it's not, we don't use the public networks out there, which are more famously used around the crypto space. All right. We, uh, we use private, we set up private networks. And uh, blockchain because of three key reasons, right? Number one, it's a decentralized system. Today, a lot, uh, you know, you, uh, most of the existing systems are based on a database. You compromise the database and the system goes down. When, when it comes to a blockchain, if you want to compromise the blockchain, you need to take out 51% of all the nodes of the blockchain. So number one, you need to know how many nodes are there to calculate 51%. Number two, you need to know where they are located to be able to take them out. So that automatically b brings in resiliency. Number two is, uh, again, the distributed nature. Blockchain is by, by nature cryptographically secure. So these are natively uh, secure systems, so you don't have to build additional security into them. And if I understand correctly, you can even mathematically say things about the difficulty Correct. of cracking these systems. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. And then the last piece is the immutability factor. Today, uh, in any you know, uh, major breach or cyber attack, the attackers are able to you know, wipe out their traces on their way out And hence, today, if you look statistically, it takes anywhere between 100 to 150 days to, uh, for an enterprise to even know it's been compromised. 150 days? Between 100 and 150 wow. days. And this is from the, th these are numbers by the analysts, right? And that's because these, 
you know, um, experts or these expert attackers are able to erase their, uh, their trace, erase the trace within the organization on their way out. What happens with blockchain technology, even if you touch the system, it's recorded. So whether you're, you have a credible entry into the system, whether it's a genuine person trying to enter the system or it's a co someone trying to compromise the system and unable to get in, every touch, every touch point, you know, every time someone tries to access anything, it's recorded on the blockchain and there's no way you can erase that because of the native immutability feature that's available in the blockchain. So and that offers you both a much higher difficulty of entry and perfect traceability of any attempts. Exact, and then you take this data, feed it into your in, in, into your monitoring system, and it's not one fifty days. You instantly know that people are trying to come, you know, uh, to gain uh, unauthorized access to your uh, information systems. So, have you seen a rising demand for these kinds of solutions over the last couple of years that have been characterized by an increasing number of cyber attacks and increasing tensions in certain markets? Absolutely. So what you're seeing today, like you rightly said, are two things, right? Number one is a lot more awareness around this. So people are getting conscious at a personal level, but also at an enterprise level, right? Around uh, cybersecurity. And in fact, I was having an interesting chat with a CISO who mentioned, I'm no longer in charge of security. I'm more like the custodian of the brand today. Uh, for simple reasons. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, people are aware, number one. Number two, also the, the attacks, uh, are increasing in number, but also increasing in uh, you know the um, the impact that they have on an enterprise on a brand, right? And so putting these two together, yes, you're seeing uh, uh, a lot of demand for cybersecurity solutions. Point number one, but also looking at uh, so, but the community is also looking at you know new modern ways to uh, to counter these threats because these threats are emerging, evolving every day, and you can't keep using the same old methods and approaches you had in the past. So in this constant race for technological superiority and competitive advantage in a context where people are more and more aware of the importance of protecting data, Correct. both for individuals and for companies, yep. which you mentioned is yep. a, has a very big impact on brand for companies themselves. What is there any particular thing, opportunity, that you're particularly excited about right now? So uh, one of the space that is growing faster than uh, you know anyone of anyone could have imagined is the whole IoT space, connected devices, right? Uh, in in fact, even if you look uh, in Singapore, for example, uh, you know I I, I I took the train down today just because it's so convenient. The train drives itself. These yep. are mm -hmm. you know self-driven Teslas, systems. self-driving cars, cars are, are coming up. Absolutely, you've got uh, drone-based delivery systems that are in place. I know that we, uh, you know, we're testing autonomous cars in the city here. I know that Amazon uses uh, trucks, even to uh, large, uh, you know, trucks to deliver goods and move goods around. Right. So security for IoT is no longer child's play. We've moved from a world where we have IoT speakers in our house to a world where we have an IoT door lock that can open our door and have people invade our privacy, where our cars are IoT driven. Correct. In fact, you mentioned cars. I was having a chat with, uh, uh, you know, a CISO of uh, a, a large auto manufacturer, and uh, he, um, so he mentioned, every car today that they manufacture is a connected car. Right. And he says, there's one thing that keeps me awake at night is, I have one of my vehicles going down the road at 100 miles an hour, and it gets compromised. Well, these are data platforms, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and, uh, and 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 then you know you'll have fatality. So it's not just about compromising right. your data and stuff like that, but you're talking about lives here, right? And so cybersecurity has gone to a whole new level here, and 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 with IoT, it's just it's, it's just exploding, right? Because m millions of devices, millions of new devices, getting connected every day and getting onto the onto the network, onto the grid. If you had to choose, is there any one particular challenge that really stands out? in all of that. Yeah, and, 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 and here's the thing, and uh, let me echo what the industry thinks. Again, I love the IoT space. I love the way it's uh, changing our lives at a personal level, but also at enterprise level, at, at uh, city levels and things like that, right? So you're seeing a lot of smart city projects. In Singapore, we have the smart nation projects where pretty much everything from utility grids and uh, stuff like that right down to homes and, and even you know the, 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 the connected toothbrushes yeah. we have these days. I think that's interesting. 
I think there is a huge opportunity when it comes from you know, an entrepreneur's perspective or when we are building solutions. How do we try and keep this new digital world of us safe? How do we keep people safe? How do we keep information safe? And how do we uh, you know, secure our way of life today in, 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 in pretty much a, a, a connected world, connected uh, all the time? I think that's such an interesting insight that it's all about securing our way of life. Exactly. And, and about keeping our loved ones safe. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Floyd, for taking the time to talk to us today. I hope you're enjoying the conference. It's fantastic. It's, it, it's great to see all the innovation and all the, you know, this whole tech space, right? Everything from big data, IoT, cybersecurity, simply astonishing. It's a great place to get connected. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> thank you very much, Floyd. Pleasure meeting with you. Thank you, Nicola.